This is a demonstration on how to make sweet and sour. You've got the choice whether you want to make sweet and sour chicken where you bring in raw chicken breast or you can bring in corn for a vegetarian version. I've already prepared the sauce. You need to bring in either a tin of pineapples um, or pineapple juice. So in here I've got about 150 ml of pineapple juice. I've added a tablespoon of tomato ketchup, a tablespoon of soy sauce, a tablespoon of vinegar, a pinch of ginger paste and some corn flour and when this cooks it will go a lighter colour and it will make the sweet and sour that you are more familiar with. So the first step that I'm going to do with my red chopping board which is for raw meat I'm going to dice my chicken breast into small pieces so a reminder on your bridge and claw when using your knife so bridge hold over when you're cutting it in half for example claw to the side so I'm just going to cut it into strips first and then I'm going to cut these strips into chunks and I'm going to get them into my frying pan so that they can start to fry. So raw chicken is this pink jelly type consistency and cooked chicken should be white. So I'm just doing this now. You can hear the sizzling from the frying pan. I've got one tablespoon of oil in my frying pan. The smaller your chicken, the quicker it will cook. So I'm making quite small pieces to stretch it out. You can do the same. Okay, and then if I just rotate my pan there. So you can see the chicken in the frying pan. I'm just going to give that a mix. Try not to let the oil spit at you, so you can turn it down so it's starting to spit. I'm just separating the chicken out. At this point you can add some seasoning if you would like, so salt, pepper, and you can add some chilli flakes to your chicken if you would like a little bit of heat in your sweet and sour. So I'm just trying to rotate the pieces of chicken, one of the best ways to do that is get a piece of chicken under your spoon, lift it to the side with your wooden spoon and then it tilts over and you can um, shimmy it back into the pan like that or you can just mix it. So keep an eye on the spitting and on the temperature. Whilst that is doing that I am just going to wash my hands and my knife. So I'm going to move the red chopping board and swap the brown chopping board because now I am preparing my vegetables. So for sweet and sour you want quite chunky cuts. So I'm going to stand my pepper up, hold on to it, cut down. Then I can see the seeds. So if I just turn the pepper towards me, I can cut all the way around my pepper. I can then cut this bottom bit off to prevent any waste. This bit can go in the scrap and I can trim off any bits to prevent wastage. So that will go into my scrap. As I said, sweet and sour remains quite chunky. So I want chunks of pepper and chunks of onion. So I'm just using my bridge method to hold in half claw to quarter. So bridge half claw to quarter. Okay, just going to give my chicken a stir. You see it's starting to almost go white on all areas. I'm just going to move my peppers to one side whilst I do my onion. So for my onion, get a firm grip of the onion please because it's um, a sphere so it'll roll around your tray. Cut the top off, this bit here. Turn it, do the same, cut the bottom off. Stand it up, bridge method, cut your onion in half. Now you can peel it. OK, 
tomatoes. So I've got my two halves of an onion and I'm just going to quarter these again. So bridge method to cut it in half and then into quarters and do the same with this one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spend a moment separating these layers of onion so that they cook quicker in the pan. So you can see that my chicken is starting to go golden on some edges, which is brilliant. I've got my food probe ready to take the temperature when, my, when I think my product is done to make sure that I'm not getting any food poisoning. If your eyes start to cry when you're cutting an onion, wash your hands um, and bin any of the scraps so it's away from you. So I'm just going to give this chicken another stir. You can see where it's starting to go golden. Okay, and now I'm going to add my peppers and my onions in. I'm going to turn the temperature up slightly on my pan now because the peppers and onions will be bringing the temperature down. I still need to fry this chicken up. So nice high heat. If it's starting to stick, just add another spoon of oil into your pan. So what you want is you want your peppers and your onions to go soft. So your peppers will um, go soft and sometimes they start to bubble on the skin. Your onions will start to turn more translucent. So I'm making sure I'm frying and I'm mixing it all together. Make sure that when you're frying with a pan that your pan handle is never poking out like here because you could knock it and end up knocking the contents off. So your pan handle always needs to be at the side or in your hand holding on to it. So now I've given it a good mix and a good fry round, I'm just separating it out on the pan so it gets a nice even cook. Okay, and then I can give my sauce a mix with my spoon and add that in. And what should happen is the sauce as it boils should start to thicken. So I'm only adding half um, and then I'll decide if I want more sauce. So. As you can see, the sound has now stopped because the cold liquid has reduced the heat of the pan. So I've got it on a high heat and it will start to bubble. What you might be able to see on the camera is little pockets of darker areas. That's because the corn flour, the starch, is starting to pop open, which makes a nice um, glossy colour in the sweet and sour as it gelatinizes, which is some food science that you'll need to learn. This sweet and sour will not be bright pink like what you might be used to because we are not adding food colouring. So you can see already it's only been cooking for a minute and the sauce has already thickened up, it's bubbled, it's gone darker and it's gone very glossy. It's starting to um, reflect the light. So you'll let that sauce go to the boil, let it bubble, you'll cook it all together for about five minutes, maybe a little bit longer. And then when you're happy, you will use your food probe, you'll turn it on, make sure it's on degrees Celsius, and then you will stab a piece of chicken like so. You'll lift it up, you'll check the temperature, and you need the core temperature of your chicken to be 75 degrees. If it's 75 degrees, then you'll be able to put it into your container. You can see from this that mine is just getting to 50, so I still need to cook this. So I'll just place it to the side. I'll have a food wipe handy. I'll wipe the end of the probe, and then I'll be ready to test again in a few moments. Otherwise, we'll get cross-contamination on the food probe. And that's it. That's how you make sweet and sour. And then when it's 75 degrees, I'd suggest you test two pieces of chicken 
you can place it into your container you will have availability um, with your seasonings so we will have mixed herbs salt black pepper white pepper paprika and chili flakes should you want to use them enjoy